Hi, I'm Dean Bushmiller with Expanding Security, and we're here to talk about the Certified Ethical Hacker version 8. Before we get into the course, I, I want to give you a reason to listen to me. Why, why should you listen to me? I mean, who, who am I? Well, I'm a Certified Ethical Hacker, version 8, version 7, version 6. I understand the testing methodologies of the EC Council. I actually helped write the original exam and I was a beta tester. I passed on my first try. I have 17 other certifications that center around security and technology. One of the big things for me is that I'm actually a penetration tester for a living and I write a lot of penetration testing articles. I was a, a columnist for Penetration Testing Magazine for 2012. Uh, I did one per month and I actually made the cover of Pentest Magazine. So I know a little bit about penetration testing. I'm going to take what the EC Council wants you to know about penetration testing and present that and then I'm going to reach out and grab a hold of the real world and bring that in to our class. So I have some real world experience that will help bring this to life. Now the EC Council wants to do things their way and I want to do things my way and you want to do things, well, for your purposes out there. So it can't just be done by following up one set of courseware or one set of slides that you're seeing here and this discussion. You have to reach out there and grab more for yourself. Let's talk about the course itself. We'll do a little introduction here and we're going to do a prerequisites test. It's a short little verbal quiz that we do back and forth to help you manage your expectations for what you should know already coming into the course. I mean you saw that in the courseware outline that you know what topics you're going to cover but we want you to have a little bit of information before you get into the meat of this course. We're going to talk about all the domains. I'm going to talk about exam preparation at the end of all of our discussion I also want to talk about readings and labs and I'll be bringing those in. As we go along through the course, what you will see is I will point to particular resources on the web. You'll usually see those at the end of each one of the uh, domains that we're going to talk about and I encourage you to go to those locations, look at those readings, start playing around with those labs and those tools that are out there. Now, we'll get into the labs later on. So here are the 20 sections of this course. I call them domains. Here are those 20 sections for you. We're going to look at each one of those and talk about what they have to offer. In general, what I want to say to you is, is that you have to have a working knowledge of the administration of these types of tools, of web servers. You have to know how to set one up before you can break one. You need to know how to set one up, administer one, and know those habits that administrators get into before you can start preying upon those uh, habits. Whether those are lazy or good, it doesn't matter, but those habits are predictable. As a security professional, you need to go in there and say, okay, I know that they're doing this, and I've done that thing, and I know that when you set up, you get these defaults, and now I'm going to take advantage of that because that needs to all be ripped out. So for each one of these that you see right in front of you, this could be theoretically um, one section, one expertise that you are good at on a team of penetration testers. I actually happen to have a really large team of global penetration testers that I reach out to. I have one person that helps me with big data. I have another person that helps me with uh, web servers. I have another person who does forensics for me. I have another person that does nothing but mobile whatsoever. And so those people are expert, experts on my team as well as I am. And I say, okay, you take care of this piece and I'll take care of that piece. We'll come together and we'll find out this is actually what's wrong with this system. Usually I'm the person that comes in to meet with a client first, collects up all the information, and then I'm the last person that the client sees that tells them, okay, here's the information that we gathered while we were there and this is what you want to do about it. So when we start this class, we'll do a little introductory module um, that's this and a couple of other things that go along with the understanding of what ethical hacking is and some definitions. And then we'll get into footprinting, which we're trying to find out what the purpose of the organization is, how big the organization is. And you want to do that not only from a physical person standpoint, but also from an IP address range standpoint. You're going to collect up that information in the footprinting and reconnaissance to figure out what the target is, what kind of thing you are hunting. If you're hunting sharks, you use this kind of bait. If you're hunting tuna, you use that kind of bait. And so we want to know how big the fish is. 
What we'll also do is find out what types of firewalls there are, what kind of wireless devices they have, and this is just a general overview of where are they and what are they doing. We'll find out if they have any remote access, and really what we're capturing is the, the positions in the organization that will actually reveal network services. And what I mean by that is, hey, if you need a Cisco engineer, you probably have well, that position in your company, and those are the tools that you have. If you need a Juniper engineer, okay, well, then I, you probably use Juniper. Or let's say that you have Maru wireless, then if you're asking for people to support that, that's probably what's inside of your organization. We'll also find out about the organization's users and some of the personal data out there that we can use to pry into the organization.